Hi, welcome to Hillcrest Sermons, Growing Together. Show us your heart's delight. I remember the first time I came to Hillcrest. I was, you know, I don't know, snot-nosed sophomore or whatever from Western Washington University. I think we got a couple pictures of me. Um, yeah, that's, that's a clever Christian Anderson right there, you know. I remember I had come to Western Washington. I followed my girlfriend up to Western who broke up with me in early October <laughs> of my freshman year. And I had turned away, you know, I, I was only going to go to a Christian college and be a youth pastor. But then I followed this girl, you know. And so here I am at Western. I mean, it's just hippies up here. There's no Christians. Like, I'm like all alone. I'm stuck, you know. And I, I went through my whole freshman year thinking, I am alone. And um, I remember just wandering. I felt like a sheep without a shepherd. I felt like a sheep without a shepherd. Maybe you guys can remember a time that you were like a sheep without a shepherd. Um, as so many people have said, uh, my name is Christian Anderson, and um, I'm a Chi Alpha missionary, or I work with um, Christian, <laughs> Campus Christian Fellowship. I, have been wor- I used to work at Campus Christian Fellowship, but it's been so long. I'm like, oh, we just say Chi Alpha. Now I'm like, oh, crazy. Yeah. So Campus Christian Fellowship. Um, up at Western. I, I actually led a community college ministry at Skagit Valley College, and so I pioneered there, but I went to this church. I was part of um, a home group. We led a home group for a couple of years. We had them eat in our home, and uh, this, this church is, like, we, we were here. We were just talking to our kids about how important this church is for us, and how each um, four of our five kids were all dedicated here on this stage, um, and uh, this church has meant so much to us. You guys have sent us out. Um, you prayed for us. You care for us. You support us. We've been so blessed by you. And you guys are changing lives in the state of Oregon and throughout the world. Um, it's incredible. Um, six years ago, you guys sent me out. Um, you guys prayed for me and Ramona and my family as we left. Um, and a lot of things have happened. A lot of things have changed in six years. Um, I actually was supposed to come and share with you guys, I think it was April 2020. Um, but uh, I, I had a different engagement. You know, something else happened. Um, no, it was, that was crazy. Anyway, but then, but in the last six years, other than that happening, you know, a lot has happened. We went down to Oregon, and we established a ministry at Oregon State University. That we, we went to take over for a work um, which had no students. Um, the, the person that was the campus pastor before me, just didn't have the energy, had a lot of family problems, and there were no students involved in the ministry. What, what, what we had for ministry was we had a house with a bunch of random renters in it, and that was, that was the ministry, you know, and so we got to go in, and um, we just started a brand new ministry, and you sent with a team of four other people, and it's been wonderful, um, and then another person that you guys support, Jeffrey Springer, he came, and he started a campus ministry at our, our close-by community college, um, and uh, so we've established these two, we're, we have these works in these two campuses, and then a few years later, we helped pioneer at University of Oregon, which is another group of missionaries that you guys have sent out to come help us. And so there's a lot of exciting things happening in Oregon over these last six years. And then also, if we can go back to my family slide here, we also adopted a son. We adopted a son, a little, little Mo, um, his name's Mons is his long name, which isn't much longer. But um, <laughs> anyway, um, so, but uh, his name's Mo, and uh, he, we just picked him up last um, year. Uh, we brought him April 29th from Hong Kong. Um, and so we were there, and, um, and uh, it was in this church that we experienced a call to go adopt. And we've been in a process for a long time, and many of you guys have been praying for us and caring for us. Um, and then Another thing, you know, another thing that's happened and changed in the last six years is as you guys sent us out, the goal was for us to start a ministry where we can raise up Oregonians to reach Oregon. And this last year, we're, we're doing our first year of internship at Oregon State University. We have, we have three wonderful interns. Yeah, it's, great. it's amazing. And um, we have three wonderful interns. Two of them are staying around. They want to do campus ministry um, in Oregon. They want to go pioneer new campuses. And one felt called to do Chi Alpha in um, South Korea. 
And so I, just to give you a sense of, you know, your guys' blessing is it's like a rolling blessing that is blessing the world. And uh, we're so blessed by that. You know, um, and, and, our, and our dream, our dream in this is that we live in a place, we live in a time, we live in a world where there's such a harvest, <laughs> where we have so many sheep that have no shepherd, and we want to see them know the light and love of Jesus. Today's reading, it talked about a time when Jesus, he looked at a people that God had brought to him. He saw, that they, he saw people who needed direction, support, love. They needed a shepherd. We go to Matthew 9, 36. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. You know, this scripture has really come alive to me in a new way for these last couple weeks. And I want to tell you a story of something that happened. So I've been in campus ministry like officially like 16 years now, which, you know, I'm not like Brady, you know, I'm not that old. But like, you know, um, but uh, is he here? Is Brady here? Yeah, there he is. I was wondering which one is going to catch that one. So anyway, so it's happened today. So, um, all right, <laughs> there it is, there it is. There it is. Praise the Lord. Um, I'll tell you later. Um, so anyway, um, but uh, I have, I've had these last couple weeks where I've experienced a miracle that I just haven't experienced in campus ministry over these last 16 years. Um, do, do we have Jersey mics up here? Is there Jersey mics up here? Yeah, okay. So I was, I was meeting with one of my interns to talk about them going to South Korea. So Korea. We were talking through their calling. And we went to Jersey Mike's. We were sit down over lunch and talk about it. And there's a guy standing in front of me with his family. Like one of his kids is crawling up his leg. And he's got cauliflower ear, which is like this ear right here that you get from wrestling. And I was a wrestler, so I'm like, that's easy. Like, I'm going to just talk to this guy. Hey, so did you used to wrestle, I say to him? He's like, well, actually, no. I'm, a, I'm an assistant wrestling coach here at OSU. And I was like, oh, well, that's crazy. He said, uh, yeah, did you wrestle? I said, well, yeah, I wrestled in high school in Washington. He's like, oh, where at? I said, oh, Lake Stevens, Washington. He said, oh, our head coach for baseball, that's where he wrestled. And I'm like, yeah, actually, I was his, like, wrestling partner. Like, we wrestled in the same team. And he's like, oh, no way. Oh, man, so are you here for the baseball game? And I said, no, no, I'm actually a campus pastor here. I, I do a ministry on campus. He goes, oh, do you know a guy named Nate Ross? Now, now I got to go back a little bit and tell you who Nate Ross is. He's a guy from another ministry at Oregon State. He was with Navigators. Um, and he started a wrestling Bible study. But God called him to move to Iowa. And so he had been doing a wrestling Bible study for about a year and a half. And then the Lord really called him to go to Iowa. And he's doing ministry at a university in Iowa now. And so I knew who this guy was. And I knew he was working with the wrestlers. And I knew he moved away. And then this uh, wrestling coach says, yeah, did you know Nate Ross? Man, he was a great guy. He had a Bible study going with our guys. I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't know Nate. He's a really nice guy. And he said, man, do you ever have a chance to meet those wrestlers? I'm like, man, I would love to. I just haven't had a chance. He's like, man, you should, man. Uh, and then I had to make a choice. What do I do right now? Because he's just kind of saying, oh, that'd be great. Uh, do I go for it? Or do I, uh? And so I said, you know what? I would love to. Can I give you my number? He's like, yeah. And he called me right then. And, uh, and so I texted him on Monday, and I said, um, hey, coach, you know, like, uh, this is me. I met you at Jersey Mike's a couple days ago. Uh, you know how these texts go, you know, and I'm not the best texter. Like, a fun little fact about me, I don't even own a cell phone, so, like, I'm texting on my computer. So I'm, like, <laughs> super awkward about how this is going to go, you know. I'm like, uh, you know, and so I'm texting, and um, I might have lost a bunch of you with that cell phone information. <laughs> so anyway, uh, anyway, but pay attention. Okay, so here we go. So, um, so here we are. We're like, uh, so I'm texting him, and I'm like stressed. And he texts me back. He says, here's this wrestler's number. You text him right now, like anytime. Like, so I text this guy named Brandon. I text him, and I say, hey, I just want to help out with the team however I can. Um, I want to be a support. Just let me know if there's something I could do. And I get a text back with this wrestler saying, which all the campus pastors in here are going to know what in the world. This is crazy. I get a text back saying, 
Christian, I'll meet with you anytime. I really think the guys on the team need a spiritual leader right now. And I was like, that is crazy. I've never experienced anything like that. And so I text him. Sure enough, we meet up for dinner on Thursday. We have a great time just talking. We share our testimonies. And he tells me about what's going on in the team. And he's like, let's do a Bible study. So this was only like three weeks ago. And so uh, a couple of Thursdays later, um, I guess it was like four weeks ago, two Thursdays later, they, he comes to my house. We have four guys that just kind of materialize in our driveway, and they start playing basketball with my kids. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is great. A couple guys, it's awesome. And then uh, three more guys show up. And I'm like, whoa, there's kind of a lot of guys here, you know. And then two more guys show up late. And we have a Bible study of these nine wrestlers that just come to my house, and they're, they're there. They're super polite, which is, that's, that's nice for the wrestlers. <laughs> so they're, they're super polite, and um, they're so excited to be there. And we sit down, and we have this Bible study, and all these guys were so engaged. And there was such a range. We had one guy that's like really knows so much. He's like, oh, the context of this verse, you know, all this stuff. And we have guys in that group that they can't find the book of Luke. They don't know where the book of Luke is. Like, they're going to the table of contents, finding everything out. Um, and as I'm going through this wonderful Bible study with these guys, they're looking at me, and it was, I, I felt like I was looking just like Jesus. I was looking at these guys who were hungry, and they were just people looking for a shepherd. It was like sheep without a shepherd. They were so hungry for the word of God. They were hoping for somebody to help explain it to them. You know, a shepherd, a shepherd provides a lot of things for a sheep. Provides food, you know, taking around to the, to the fields, safety, protecting them from different predators, um, and belonging. Actually, it's weird because they migrate. Like the sheep migrate with the shepherd um, you know, I know that shepherds, I think, I'm not really an aggregarian. Agri I don't know. I don't even know how to say it. I'm not really a sheep person. So, but, um, but I know that they have places they bunk them down and stuff like that. But, like, in essence, actually, wherever they go, the shepherd is the home for these sheep. The, the, the shepherd's the one that makes the sheep feel like they belong, that they're safe, that they're cared for. And right now, we live in a time that is, is full of um, a lack of spiritual nourishment. So many people don't feel safe. And people do not feel like they belong. That's what characterizes not just the next generation in the Pacific Northwest, but I would say the culture of the Pacific Northwest. Um, now, college ministry, it's a kind of crazy thing. Um, when I was a kid, we used to have these orange juices that were in these uh, little bottles, like concentrate, you know? My dad was like, we're not buying the fancy, you know, natural orange juice. We're buying this concentrate stuff, you know? And uh, that's kind of what a community, that's what kind of what a, a, a college is like, OSU, uh, our colleges. It's like you take all the parts of our culture, and then you boil it down for the most, like, like all the emotions and all the, all the things that are going on in our culture, it gets concentrated in these next generation of college students. And that's, that's, kind of what, that's kind of what being on campus is like. It's like taking, you know, it's taking all these very emotional, like very passionate, all, all the things that people go crazy about and then like times 10 on the college campus. It's, it's pretty wild. And so the things that I'm saying today about these students, about this next generation, it's actually not unique to them. It's us. This is what we're like. These kids are experiencing the things we're experiencing. They just might, it might be amped up a little bit. You know, so the shepherd is supposed to give, like when we're talking about Jesus, you know, he's supposed to give spiritual nourishment. He's supposed to care for his sheep. You know, shepherd's supposed to, you know, like Pastor Tim teaching teaching and, and caring for the people in this congregation, trying to show them the word of God, teaching them, teaching you guys what it means to follow Jesus. 
But right now we live in a time without a shepherd. And this year I've been really learning what post-Christian means. Um, people have been saying we were post-Christian for quite a while in the Pacific Northwest. Um, but I'm learning, you know, um, I always, everyone just kind of, I always thought about it as just like a sequential thing, like post-Christian, like, oh, well, we had the Christian time, and now it's after that, you know, people just aren't Christian. But what I'm learning is post-Christian means that people are walking away from something. It's not a lack of familiarity with what being a Christian is, or, but, or it's, it's some kind of perception they have of what it means to be a Christian, and they're leaving that. So it's not even just like, oh, these people, post-Christian, you know, if, if somebody doesn't, if somebody's raised in a non-Christian home, it's not that they have no exposure, and they're like, oh, they just are blank slate. No, they've usually had not great experiences. They've had bad experiences. And we're not, when we talk to people about Jesus, when I'm on campus and I'm talking to students, I'm not competing just against the different philosophies of our age. I'm also having to talk through what their experience with Jesus and his church has been already. Because there's a lack of spiritual, of good spiritual nourishment in our time and place. God might be calling you guys to be somebody to correct, to fill, to to change, alter a perception of who Jesus is in somebody who's had a bad experience or has a bad understanding, who's been given bad food. There's also, the shepherd makes people feel safe. A shepherd makes people, man, I just love when Pastor Tim got up and he gave that image from Mother's Day about, man, imagine the time that you felt the most connected and loved by your mom or grandma, the time you felt really safe. That is a shepherd's heart, that somebody would feel so safe. You know, um, people call this generation, Generation Z. I don't know what they're going to do next. Do you guys know if they're going to go to A? Like, what are they going? What is it? It is Alpha. Back to the beginning. Who was the first Alpha? Do you know? Generation? Nobody knows. Okay, so anyway, (laughs) moving on. Thanks for teaching me something. Um, So anyway, um, we are, we're going back. You know, I think, honestly, we could call this generation the anxiety generation. Actually, and it's, it's not right to put that on people under the age of 25. I think our culture is just anxious. We're all anxious. Right now, um, it's, it's just this idea of like, it, it's just increasing. And um, they're saying that um, people in college, young adults, feel twice as anxious um, as they did when they were teenagers. And I'm not exactly sure why that is, and I think a lot of people are concerned. Why is that? And we have this problem, and people don't understand all of the ins and outs of why we're stressed, why we're anxious. But maybe we can be this shepherd to help somebody feel more safe. Maybe God wants, through you, to be somebody that makes someone feel safe, grounded, Not be a relationship that's just going to drift off into oblivion or wonder if I can really trust this person with my words. God's saying, man, these sheep need a shepherd. You know, also with belonging, in terms of belonging, we have a culture where people just don't feel like they belong. I read a thing the other day about AI friendships. Okay, so I went on, like, this is on the New York Times. Have you guys ever read about this or heard about this? It's like you can get like an AI friend, like you, I think, design your own. And if you pay enough, you can even like, get a community of AI friends that talk to each other. Like, and then, um, you know, it's like crazy. And uh, I think you can date them. I, I saw, anyway, I saw this thing. I saw this thing, on, and this is like, you know, I'm like so technologically like not literate. You know, so, but I was reading in the New York Times and they had an example of this and like a person like walks home and they get a text from the AI friend. It's like, hey, how's your day going? You know, what are you up to? They're like, oh, nothing much. What are you up to? And they said, I'm just cooking lasagna for my kids. 
And it's like an AI, whatever. Like it doesn't have lasagna. It doesn't, what in the world? It doesn't know what it's doing. Anyway, so it's just like you can have this whole conversation. I saw Jeff Jenkins shaking his head like, yes. Yeah, I'm right. Okay, good. Because he's up on the stuff. So anyway, um, so, but uh, I talked to a college student on campus like, are people doing this? He's like, I've never heard about this before in my life. You know, like, so it's still crazy for the college students. But um, I was surprised to find out like 30 million people had subscribed to it. And, I mean, I'm not, I'm not being a soothsayer here, but it's like, is that the direction we're going? What does that say about the way that we feel like we belong? What does the next generation even consider the word belonging to be? You know, on campus, I find that students, um, the, the hardest thing, and maybe, it, I know Brady's like said it's been true for everybody since all of time, but... Um, and belonging and how to interact with friends. It's like at a level of, like, I don't understand, like, how, how it's gotten so hard. The, the students, they either expect to, like, they don't want friends at all, or they want all of their friends to help them all the time. It's like one of the two. It's like hyper extreme. Like, you are going to be my support people and get me through everything. Um, we just had a sermon the other day where I, I talked about how, you know, friends are going to fail you. And you're going to fail your friends. And that was something that they had, I feel like they had never heard before. The idea that you can still be friends with somebody who's going to fail you. Like you don't need to just X them out. And that you shouldn't just lean on them all the way. The understanding of what it means to belong has just changed so much. And so Jesus says, you know, with all these things about, man, we look at these people, they just need a shepherd. He actually says that's not... You know, he's, he talks about what is the real problem. The real problem is that he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. We are, ref- we are facing a responsibility crisis. We're facing a responsibility crisis where in our, in, in our church nationally, in the Pacific Northwest, um, Average, like people who are, are pastors are, are not staying in ministry. Um, people called into ministry are not saying yes. Church members in congregations see it as a pastor's job to care for the people in the church and not their own. We're facing a time where people are not stepping up to say, I'm going to care. I'm going to be a shepherd to somebody else. And it's hurting us. You know, um, in 2006, which wasn't that long ago, when I was a student, everybody wanted to be a leader. Um, this last year, for our, we have a, a class called the Leadership Training Class. And usually we say Leadership Training Class. They're like, oh, I, sign me up, sign me up. This year, um, we had three people come, like, s- sign up for it. We invited 30, and we had three sign up. And one of the main reasons we think that the students said no, or they didn't want to go to it, was because they were scared of the term leader. They were afraid of the idea of accepting responsibility. We're in a time just like Jesus. There's this this huge harvest. And so few people are saying, Jesus, send me. But he does give us a solution. In verse 38, he says, Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest and send out laborers into his harvest. And so from this verse, I just want to highlight two callings for walking out Jesus' solution. The first one, it's super obvious, is pray. Is pray. We are supposed to pray for laborers, for people to say, yes, I'm going to be a shepherd to this generation. Um, You know, back at my wrestling story, um, I didn't share this part yet, but actually it turns out when I met with that wrestler on that Thursday night, it turned out that guy from Isle was just visiting Corvallis. He just happened to be in town. And I I texted him, hey, I got got his number from somebody. I said, hey, I would love to talk to you sometime, maybe over the phone about um, whether or not, uh, how, how to lead this wrestling Bible study. He said, hey, let's meet for coffee on 
on Thursday. It's like, wait, I thought you were in Iowa. But no, he was in town. And it's just like, whoa, God is really setting something up. That was a huge confirmation for me. And as we're, we're sitting there, he said, you know, when I went to Iowa, I felt it feels great. Like God really called me there. But the thing I was so nervous about was, what have I done with these guys? And I don't know what to do. So he was praying, God, raise up somebody. I, if he would have asked me to do this before he left, I would have probably said, no, I don't really have time for it. But this process of getting this, this text thread, I mean, if God works through a text thread, it's a miracle. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm like, what in the world? I feel so called by the Lord to care for these people. And Nate was praying for somebody. God is the answer. God is the one who will raise up the leaders. We need to really pray. If you know somebody that, that's a sheep without a shepherd that you're care for, maybe they're on their side of the country, maybe it's a grandkid, we got to pray. The answer that God says is to pray, to earnestly seek the Lord so that he will raise up people. It's not a work of our own. but We need to step like God is going to answer. You know, he's been answering my prayers. Um, I've been praying for more workers down at Oregon State, and we've gotten so many great workers sent from this, um, from CCF and from, from this church that have come down and joined the work of what we're doing at Oregon. You know, with these interns, I share about these three interns. Who went, the Lord is answering our prayers and raising up these people. God is faithful to answer these prayers. The second, the second truth we see is that we need to be able to be responsive to following the Spirit. Because if, God, if we're praying for God to raise up laborers for the harvest, it means that those people need to be responsive. And they need to say yes. They need to listen to the Spirit. And so the second one is that we need to follow the Spirit. Because you may be the answer to someone's prayer. God be, may be making an opportunity. I don't know if you remember, but there was that moment where I was talking to that wrestling coach in line, and he said, oh, man, yeah, you should meet him sometime. And it was just so clear before me. I had a moment that I saw the Lord had brought something, and there was a choice. Do I follow and see where this goes? I had no plan. I still have no plan, but I see an opportunity. Am I going to step? Or am I going to let it pass? We are supposed to be responsive to the opportunities the Spirit gives us. You know, at this church, I have had so many times where the Lord has told me different things. I remember being over there, like serving at um, Skagit Valley College. I remember sitting over here, and um, we were doing Missions Month, and the, net, the different pictures, the different missionaries were coming up. And a, a, a woman in our church turned to me and said, that's going to be you someday. You're going to be up there on that thing. And I was like, I'm not, I love my job at Skagit Valley College. I don't really have a plan to leave, but we'll see, you know. And, well, I guess she was right. You're like, you know, here I am. I'm speaking at admissions, you know. So I remember being over there. And, and uh, Carlo had just written a song um, where he talked about we're all adopted. And, and that hit me. And I just felt the Lord say, you need to be open to adopting. There are these moments where the Spirit speaks to us, and we need to choose to say yes. We do need to, like, like we need, need to, to walk it out. We need to discern it. You know, both of those times, there was a period of discerning. And we definitely just aren't just like, ah. Oh. I remember one time I was sitting over there, and we had another missionary come, and he was a Wycliffe Bible translator. And I remember... I was like listening to his sermon. I, I knew everything he was going to say before he said it. And I'm thinking, oh man, what's going on with this? Did I, was I on a mission board with this guy? And I'm like thinking about all these times, like maybe I heard him speak before. Never. I'd never heard him before. So I leaned to Mona. I was like, I know everything this guy's going to say. And Mona's like, me too. Oh, the wife's in? Oh, I'm totally doing this. Like Brady, Brady, this is also a, Brady didn't know about this yet. He, this is the first time he's heard this. I was like hearing it, and I'm getting more and more. I'm like, I know exactly who's going to say God is putting this together. 
I was going to get up at the end of that service, go to Roman Stefan, Stefanu, I think his name, I think he has this one, and I was going to say, I'm leaving my ministry right now. I'm going to Wycliffe Bible Translators. That's what's going to happen. And uh, I'm quitting. I'll tell Brady on Monday, you know, like I'm having a spiritual experience. And then all of a sudden Ramon was like, oh, his S's are so unique. Oh, wait, we heard him in Wenatchee. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. We, we had. All right. Okay. So anyway, so we got to be responsive. We got to be responsive, but we can't lose our mind. You know what I mean? Like we got to, we got to have discernment. So, but I remember, you know, when the, the same time, the same time that, that we were being sent out, um, Cassie, Cassie um, now Bizub, she's, uh, she's hoping to lead a, uh, a new ministry down in Oregon. She was a student here and she was sitting, I think somewhere over here. And as people were praying for me to be sent out, God said to her, that's going to be you someday. Are we open to being the answer to somebody's prayer, whether it's Royal Family Kids Camp, hosting at Sikkim, welcoming somebody like you meet on a Sunday to lunch, whether it's being a shepherd to a sheep that you meet at your work, in your community. This church has such a legacy of doing that. And you guys have done that for me when I was a college student, a sophomore. And it changed my life. And I just want to ask us just to keep going, to keep saying yes. I'm going to pray for you guys right now. And I'm just going to continue to pray for for the Lord to continue to work in you and, and, and pray for these shepherds to be raised up. Lord, I just thank you so much for this church. I thank you for their support, their care their love for us. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, this church has such a rich tradition of being a shepherd to um, these lost sheep, to being a place, a home of belonging, of care, of safety. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you could um, continue, Lord Jesus, to work in their prayers, Lord Jesus, that you would continue to have all of us be continued to committed, Lord Jesus, to praying for people, Lord, to know Um, to know you, to know the real shepherd, the one true shepherd. Lord, I pray that you would help us, each one of us, Lord, to open our hearts and and walk in the ways that the Spirit calls us, to be responsive and hope and see you move. Lord, we love you. Lord, we trust you. Lord, I just pray that you would fan your spirit in the flame, Lord, in this community, Lord, that you could continue to bless them for their generosity and their love. Lord, I pray for more and more opportunities for this congregation to find people, Lord, that don't know you, Lord God, people in this community, in this neighborhood. Lord, I pray that Bellingham would be different, would continue to be different, would continue to change because so many people here are saying, yes, I'm going to be a shepherd to this person, to this lost sheep. Lord, help us to have compassion like you did. That is not comfortable with letting people continue to wander and be afraid and lonely. We pray for your power and we pray for your discernment. And we thank you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for listening. For more info, visit hcbellingham.com and join us any Sunday, 9 and 11 a.m.